everyone welcome to home school so like in the today's uh, video we will be discussing the complex tissues we have completed the simple permanent tissues that is the parenchyma collenchyma and the sclerenchyma in our previous videos so today we will take up the complex tissues or complex permanent tissues so if you remember so the, initially there were two types of tissues one was meristematic other one was the permanent tissue so meristematic was the one which was able to divide and the permanent was the one which was not able to divide which was actually matured or was being assigned a function so those were called as the uh, permanent tissues and among the permanent tissues we again have two types that is simple and complex so simple we have completed in our previous videos today we will take up the complex permanent tissues so we have also seen a diagram a small example in the previous video what exactly a complex and a simple permanent tissue means so simple permanent tissue is it is a group of cells or a tissue wherein all the cells are of similar shape structure and everything and those are been called as the simple permanent tissues if in a tissue all the cells are similar then we call it as the simple permanent tissue if in case in a tissue the cells which are present are of different shape and structure then we call them as the complex permanent tissue so complex permanent tissue what are the characteristics of that so firstly the cells have different shape and structure different shape and structure but however though they have different shape and structure they perform all cells all cells however however perform same function they all perform same function as a unit as a unit so what does that mean so on the other day we had taken a example like this so here all the cells are similar in shape and structure hence we had called them as the simple permanent tissues but here the cells are of different shape so one cell is this way one cell is this way another cell is this way so here the shapes are different but again like the simple permanent tissues here this particular complex permanent tissue is also performing the same function all these cells are collectively performing the function x here also all these cells together are performing a function some y let's imagine okay but however they are not performing different different functions together they are performing a single function and they are working here as one single unit here as a one single tissue so such tissues are called as the complex permanent tissues so uh, we have two important complex permanent tissues the first one is the xylem and second one is the phloem xylem and phloem these are the two complex tissues which we are going to study in this particular video so firstly we will see what is the xylem xylem as we all know that it is a water conducting tissue so xylem it has like we had seen a complex tissue since xylem is also a complex tissue so xylem should also have different components that is the tissue of the xylem should have different types of cells or the cells with different shapes and structure should be present so it is called as water conducting tissues water conducting tissue in all the plants and since it is a complex tissue it should be having the cells which have got different shapes and structures so what and those cells which constitute a tissue are called as the elements of the xylem okay so now first thing you have to remember about the xylem is it is a water conducting tissue 
second very important thing is it also provides a strength or a mechanical support to the plant so in the next part i'll explain how exactly it is providing the mechanical support so remember it is a water conducting tissue and it provides the sub mechanical support or strength to the plants i what are the elements of the xylem so now xylem elements okay so firstly the first element is the tracheids tracheid is the first element and then see uh, like we had said that the complex tissues made up of different uh, types of cells or the cells with different shapes and structure so those different shapes and structures are being given a single single names here so one such structure or element is called as a tracheid another one is called as the vessel the next one is the xylem fibers then the fourth one is the xylem parenchyma xylem parenchyma anyways xylem fibers and parenchyma they also have some individual uh, functions also to play very small small minor individual functions but as a whole they are functioning as a water conducting tissue T together they are functioning as a water conducting tissue along with that they are performing some small small individual functions also so anyways what are those individual functions and how they are acting collectively everything we will see in detail now so we will take up one by now one by one so firstly we will take up the tracheids now tracheids are important members of the xylem or these are the important cells of the xylem so these are mainly elongated structures these are elongated tube like structures elongated tube like with tapering ends with tapering ends so if it is elongated tube like structure with a tapering ends then how do we write it so we are supposed to write it this way with the tapering ends elongated and tube like structures fine then the next point so these tracheids very very important point they are dead elements tracheids are dead elements since they are dead definitely the protoplasm should be absent there so these are the dead elements without without protoplasm without protoplasm or the protoplast fine so the first thing is these are elongated tube like structures with the tapering ends and then these are dead elements without the protoplasm and then next one is these are usually the these are thick wall structures which is almost like double layered and the inner walls okay the inner walls inner walls have thickenings inner walls have thickenings which are which are usually which are usually like see if this is the inner wall then the thickenings are ununiform that is they are not in a proper form if they have to be uniform then it should go like this if there should be a smooth thickening but the thickening is not smooth here the thickening is in some parts of the tracheid the thickenings are not present so they are not uniform so which are usually not uniform which are not uniform okay then another important uh, feature about the tracheids are the tracheids especially in the angiosperms in angiosperms in angiosperms the tracheids tracheids 
ind vessels ind vessels are important water conducting elements are important water conducting water conducting elements okay so what does this particular sentence mean see um, since there are four elements that is tracheids vessels uh, xylem parenchyma and the xylem fibers though collectively they are acting as a one single tissue that is the water conducting tissue some in some cases okay in some cases the xylem parenchyma and the xylem uh, fibers these two elements sometimes will not be participating directly in the water conduction okay try to understand this we we call them in some cases directly they are involved in the water conduction whereas in some cases like in the case of angiosperms they are not directly involved in the water conduction hence we call them as in angiosperms tracheids and vessels are important water conducting elements that is because they are directly participating in the water conduction hence they are called as the water conducting elements in the angiosperms whereas the xylem parenchyma and the xylem fibers are not directly participating in the water conduction hence we are not taking them as the important elements here okay but anyways while when we go for the parenchyma and the fibers we will see what are what are their functions and how do they work actually fine right? so these are four important uh, for, uh, like features of the tracheids so now moving on to the inner part of the tracheids so firstly these are elongated structures that is fine in all the types of tracheids these are elongated structures only but when you see into the inner orientation where we have this irregular thickenings or ununiform thickenings so we have something some structures like this so these are few these are some structures which are present in the tracheids like this okay so this is one example another one is okay this is one example and again i'll write one more example here okay so these are few types or forms of the tracheids so inner this this particular inner circle how exactly the water is been getting passed here so here the water is getting passed between these uh, these members here or these particular structures so from these structures the water will be passed or water will be conducted from the root to the shoots like this okay so even here also they are being conducted from root to the shoots so so if i mean if inside the tracheid if we have single single rings without attachment to one another then we call such tracheids as the annular one okay these are called as the annular one and in case if we have such kind of ring like structure inside the uh, tracheids then that is called as the spiral so this is called as annular this is called as spiral and so if there are some structures like we have pit like structures then we call them as a pit tracheids okay we call them as a pit like tracheid so usually these two are very very important that is one is like annular other one is the spiral one so if there are something like a uh, very a uh, small uh, pit like structures which are again connected through which the water is getting conducted like this then such structures are called as the pit structures or many a times they call them as a bordered pit tracheids also fine right? so these are different forms of the tracheids and the main function of the tracheid is the water conduction as a whole also as a whole tissue also it is it is uh, functioning as a water conducting cell individually also it is functioning as the water conducting cell so next one is the xylem vessels 
Vessels are the long cylindrical tube like structures which are made up of many number of cells within it and all those cells uh, or all those cells which are present in a single vessel is called as the vessel member. So let's see a structure first and then we will write out the points. So let's imagine this is one particular structure or a vessel like this. It is a long cylindrical tube like structure. Okay. So inside this we have many structures like this. Small, small structures like this which are called as the <clears throat> vessel members. So this as a whole is called as a vessel and this is called as the vessel members. Vessel members and here we have some perforations perforations like this so it is let's see even in the trach it's also previously we had trach we had seen trach it something like this where it was having a tapering end so for this also usually i just wipe this off vessel member so it is a continuous structure like this. So in a long plant, one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. So it will be going on. So here also we have one trachea. So again, one trachea, one trachea, another trachea, another trachea. So it goes on like this. It is a chain like, it is, it is a chain which is continuous from the root till the tip of the stem. So that is called as a trachea chain or a trachea connection. That is how the water has to move from the root till the tip of the shoot so now what happens if the water is getting firstly if the water enters here from here it has to be transferred to this particular trachea so there is a need of a connection here so here since they have tapering ends i'll wipe it off since they have tapering ends usually the trachea will be connected like this so here what happens here there is a connection like this. Here there is a connection like this. If there is one more, it will be having a connection like this. So here we have some joints wherein there is a passage here. And from here the water will be entering in case of the trachids. Okay. So I didn't explain this previously. That is because if it is explained along with the vessel, it will be more clear. So now... This is the way from where the water is getting transferred. Water is getting transferred. Here also again the water is getting transferred. Coming on to the vessels now. In case of the vessels also it is the same here. Like this. This is the second vessel we have. This is the third vessel we have. So it goes on. Here we have one more vessel again. So it goes on. It is again continuous long chain like structure from the root till the tip of the plant. So here since we have vessel members like this okay we have vessel members and these vessel members are actually interconnected these vessel members are interconnected up to the perforations up to the perforations so perforations are nothing but small uh, hollow structures are called as the perforations so now Water which is entering here is entering through these vessel members one after the other, one after the other, one after the other and then it is reaching to the tip of the plant. So now, so what is the, the again the peculiar characteristic or very important characteristic about these particular vessels is the vessels are also dead. The vessels are also the dead elements. Vessels are also the dead element. So definitely there is no protoplasm here. And another important character which you have to remember here is every, every or the vessels are, vessels are made up of, vessels are made up of vessel, small cells, small cells called vessel members called vessel members and each and every single vessel member okay each and every single vessel member is surround is made up of a thick lignified walls every single vessel member here 
every single vessel member is made up of lignified walls lignified walls where we had seen this particular lignified walls where were the lig where was the lignin lignin present actually lignin was present in the sclerenchyma and was a sclerenchyma a dead tissue or a, a living tissue sclerenchyma was a dead tissue so definitely wherever the lignin is present it should be a dead tissue only so or a dead member only so since there is a presence of the lignin here we call the vessel as a dead element of the xylem so tracheid is also a dead element and the vessels are also the dead elements of the xylem fine so firstly it is a cylindrical long cylindrical like structure long cylindrical like structure and they are dead and they are made up of small cells which are called as the vessel members and every vessel member has got the lignified walls around it and very very important is they also these vessel members also have a central central large lumen central large lumen a uh, lumen is a hollow structure which is present in a cell so there is a small central or a, uh, a large central lumen is present and surrounding there is a thick lignin deposition present in the walls of those vessel members and hence so due to the presence of the lignin we call them as the dead elements of the xylem okay so this is about the vessels now so we are left with the xylem parenchyma and the xylem fibers xylem fibers are again the dead elements of the xylem so it is like similar to the sclerenchyma fibers we had seen the sclerenchyma fibers isn't it sclerites and the fibers were the two forms of the sclerenchyma so same explanation same uh, structure and everything in case of the xylem fibers also that is they have again the thick they have thick lignified walls so if it is lignified it means that they have lignin deposition in their walls thick lignified walls and central lumen is present central lumen is present and the lumen which is present here is an obliterated lumen obliterated what does this particular structure that is the obliterated lumen means so here if this is a fiber okay we have seen these are this is a structure of a fiber so the 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 formation of the lumen the central hollow okay the central hollow the formation of the lumen is formed due to the thickening of the walls of the thickening of the walls of this particular fiber since there is an extreme level of thickening like this so automatically automatically there is one small central hollow structure which has formed automatically due to the excessive thickenings of the uh, walls of the fiber or due to the excessive lignin deposition in the walls of the xylem fiber so the, such an uh, lumen which is formed is called as an obliterated lumen so we have an central obliterated lumen and sometimes the xylem fibers may be septate also sometimes they may be septate and sometimes they may be aseptate so the one which we have seen here is an aseptic we don't have any septa here but in some cases we also see the fibers wherein you can see some small structures like this transverse walls transverse walls which are being formed so such a wall if there is a wall in the lumen then we call it as an septate one okay so here also we have the thickening like this there is again excessive deposition of the lignin here so since there is excessive deposition of the lignin definitely it should be a dead member and since it is a dead 
so it is obvious that the the cells are devoid of the protoplasm there is no protoplasm present in case of tracheids also no protoplasm vessels no protoplasm xylem fibers also there is no protoplasm so all together all the three elements the first three elements that is the the, the tracheids vessels and the xylem fibers are the dead elements of the xylem the only living element in case of the xylem is the xylem parenchyma xylem parenchyma these are the living cells which are thin walled okay these are living cells living cells which are thin walled which are thin walled and their walls are made up of the cellulose their walls are made up of the cellulose so these are the living cells they have got thin walls all the other elements have got the thick walls due to the lignin deposition and they these parenchyma uh, xylem parenchyma cells have got thin walled and their walls are not made up of lignin their walls are made up of the cellulose and Uh, an extra function which is being performed by the xylem parenchyma along with the conduction of water so one common function is the conduction of the water along with the conduction of the water it is also performing one more function that is storage storage of the food or the storage of the nutrients is also and one function of the xylem parenchyma it is able to store the starch and also some other materials like tannins or anything else okay they can also store they they, they usually store the starch along with the starch they are also able to store the other substances like resins or tannins and etc fine so very important uh, feature you have to remember is these are the living only living members not just living these are the only living members of the xylem then these are thin walled which are made up of the cellulose then they help in the storage wherein it usually stores starch very importantly and sometimes it also stores other substances like tannins resins and many other many other nutrients or many other complexes then apart from this the very uh, the most important function which is which, which it is performing is conduction of water it is performing conduction of water but a slight a slight difference here is it is not performing a normal conduction of water but it is performing a radial conduction of water it is performing radial conduction of water so now what does this particular radial conduction means so here if this is one structure one this is let's imagine this is a tracheid this is a chain of a tracheid and we have some cells like this surrounding to this we have some cells like this these are the cells so let's imagine these cells are the parenchyma xylem parenchyma cells so now radial conduction is if this is a cell if water is moving in all the directions like this okay if water is moving in all the directions then such a movement or such a conduction is called as a radial conduction of water so let's imagine here we have water now these are all water droplets now this is traveling this way also which is called as the normal conduction of the water that is the upward conduction Ap apart from this or along with this upward conduction it is also transporting the water this way okay so when you look into a plant if this is a if this is a plant we have branches here we have branches here we have branches here so here this is the tip so this conduction is called as the upward conduction if the water is moving this way we call it as a upward conduction but how about this the water is required to this branches also to the branches again we have sub branches here so the water is required to this branch also this branch also this branch also 
isn't it so who is transporting the water to these sites it is being transported by the xylem parenchyma hence we call that xylem parenchyma is also functioning in or it is functioning as a radial conduct radial conducting member of the xylem so the function of the xylem parenchyma is radial conduction of water along with this this is also helpful in the storage of the complexes okay so this is about the xylem so xylem tracheids and vessels and fibers are the dead elements xylem parenchyma are the living elements so in case of the need <coughs> so very important uh, points which you have to remember for the neat is which are the dead elements and which is the living element this is the first point you have to remember then the second one is tracheids and the vessels are the important members which are present in the angiosperms for the water conduction this is the second point the tracheids and the vessels in case of the angiosperm they are present as the important water conducting elements then third very important point which you have to remember here is gymnosperms lack the vessels in the gymnosperms vessels are not present they lack vessels this is again very important you have to remember okay then apart from the in case of the xylem fibers apart from the conduction of the water the xylem fibers also help in the in providing the mechanical support to the plant so this is one more point then the next one which elements among the uh, which um, which element of the xylem is helpful in the radial conduction of the water or they may ask it as which particular element is providing the water to the branches in case of the in case of a tree in case of a banyan tree or some other example they can give it us so it is like branches definitely it should go the other way then it is understood that it is undergoing the radial conduction of the water and which is providing the radial conduction of the water it is the xylem parenchyma which is providing the radial conduction of the water okay so these are a few important points which you have to remember in case of the xylem xylem tracheids and remember the uh, they may sometimes they may give you the give the diagrams also and they may ask you to uh, like show which particular diagram is which element so if they give something like annular or spiral then it should be a an annular spiral or they also they may also give a bordered pit so remember if they if they show the tapering ends like this if they show the tapering ends like this then it should be a tracheid only sometimes for the confusion how they prove, how they give it is they may give a structure like this on one side on the other side they may give a structure like this like this and then like this so how it looks is this is also going in the same form and this is also going in the same form but if they give the perforations like this then it should be a vessel if they provide a connection like this then it should be a tracheid definitely so if there is a tapering end if there is a tapering end it should be a tracheid if it is a cylindrical structure it should be a vessel so this difference should be very clear if the if in case if they ask you to uh, identify the diagrams and then write it fine so this is about the xylem and its elements the main water conducting tissue which is present in the plants so now apart from this we have one more complex tissue that is the phloem so phloem we will take up in the next video okay so uh, xylem and phloem are very very important from the neat point of view and sometimes they may also provide one more diagram that is they may provide you a full diagram which is showing all the parts or all the elements that is the xylem uh, tracheid or the vessels and the xylem parenchyma as well as the xylem fibers all together they may show it so for example one structure like this this is this is one structure 
okay and then we have one element like this and then we have some structures like this okay this is one structure now all right so now they may ask you to identify which structure is what when they give such a diagram you have to see the structures first like what is showing so if in case okay um, if in case they have given something like this then it is a clear indication that it is it is being showing the protoplasm so if it is a protoplasm it is a living element and which is the living element the living element is the parenchyma so this is the parenchyma so next one is so the next structure which is being given some perforations will be given like this or it may be given empty also if it is a cylindrical structure then it should be a vessel next then okay i have written only one structure here next i am writing one more structure like this i i am giving something like this okay so the remaining structure is one is the fiber other one is the tracheid so how do you identify the tracheid and the uh fiber so both are having the tra both are having the taper ends this is also having the tapering end this is also having a tapering end so how do you identify between a fiber and a tracheid now when you, uh, when i had drawn a tracheid i had drawn some inner structures there but when i had drawn the fiber i had not drawn anything inside so inside it was all a hollow lumen and it was having a thickening like this very a uh, very prominent thickening or very prominent lignin deposition was there and inside it was all a hollow which we call it as a lumen there whereas in case of the tracheid we had seen something like some structures like this if it was annular then there were structures like this if it was a spiral then there were structures like this if it was a a pitted one then there were structures like this and if it was a reticulate one so reticulate one i guess we had not seen right so if it was a reticulate one then there will be something like it will be like this so a network like uh, it is showing a network that is if water is entering in one particular section then it has to enter the other section through that particular network that is called as a reticulate so <clears throat> so this is something called as reticulate type of tracheid so if there is anything any structure like this so it might this these sections or these structures which are written thick structures they may be anything they may be uh, annular they may be spiral they may be pitted one they may be reticulate one anything so if there are any structures inside then you have to note it as the or you have to take it as a tracheid and the one which is empty have to be taken as fibers so many a times they may they have given this particular diagram should be very very clear here they may give some structures or they may leave it empty also okay or may in some cases the parenchyma will be shown this way or in some cases the parenchyma will be shown this way so here there are two structures and then septas okay so it can be shown this way also the other way which i had drawn previously so in the both sections so if there are septas and something like this if they, if they show the presence of the protoplasm and nucleus dense protoplasm and nucleus there it is the parenchyma that is the living cell the one which is cylindrical in structure should be the vessel and the one tapered structure elongated tapered structure which is totally empty is the fiber and the elongated tapered structure which have some structures inside is called as a fiber many many a times they have given this diagram and they have asked to uh, like show which particular they have named it as a b c d i just you have to uh, show which is a which is b which is c and which is d you have to name them properly so remember this particular structure also fine 
So this completes the xylem as a whole. So in the next, in the upcoming video, we will again take up the phloem. So I'll meet you guys in the next video with the phloem. So till then, keep watching the videos.